Maize lethal necrosis or MLN is among the most important challenges facing maize production in Eastern Africa. The disease was first reported in Kenya in 2011 and has since been confirmed in Ethiopia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda. When the disease uh, started in 2011-2012 in Bomet and spread to the, all the other maize growing areas, the estimated loss in terms of uh, acreage or hectare was 77,000 hectares of maize worth about 4.4 billion Kenyan shillings and that, as I said, is a conservative uh, estimate. Farmers and seed companies have been devastated by the disease that is known to cause up to 100% loss of grain yield. CMIT and partners, including national research organizations, seed companies and regulatory agencies have prioritized to stop the spread of MLN to non-affected countries. When uh, MLN, a disease like that, strikes a crop, there's a number of uh, big shocks. And the first one, of course, that we should be aware of and that come to mind is the farmers. The resource poor subsistence farmers, they suddenly will either harvest very little or they will harvest almost nothing. Then in the seed industry, there is a big uh, demand for resistant material that is not immediately available. We don't understand exactly how the resistance works, so we can take our varieties and make them high yielding and good and everything, plus resistance to MLND, we have to learn. And thirdly, then we have to uh, work with the national programs, with academia, because they will do the basic research to try to understand the background of the resistance, the genes that are involved, etc. Intensive breeding work has been going on to develop MLN tolerant and resistant maize varieties as a long-term solution. And for the last four years, tremendous progress has been made to identify several promising hybrids and inbred lines that are tolerant or resistant to MLN. What we are seeing today is a success for all our partners. Uh, I would say the big maize success uh, because we have not only a wide set of breeding materials of CIMIT that are offering resistance to disease, but we have also seen today how some of the CALRO materials are performing. CALRO lines crossed with CIMIT lines and deriving hybrids and they performing so well against the disease is the most gratifying thing to me today. A lot of this work is conducted at the MLN screening facility in Naivasha, Kenya, established in 2013 as a response to the disease outbreak. Over 15 multinational and national seed companies, as well as national research programs, have been supported to evaluate their maize lines and hybrids. In this uh, season, uh, we have received around uh, 21,000 rows of maize, uh, mainly coming from private partners, around uh, 9,000 rows, which is also including uh, some of the NARS and Calro, Kefis, and uh, Remaining uh, uh, 12 to 13,000 rows of maize coming from CIMIT uh, pipeline, which comprise of uh, inbred lines, hybrid validations, uh, and together we are covering 21,000 rows of maize in, during this cycle of uh, MLN screening activities. This is 100% yeah. crop loss yeah. mm -hmm. if there is MLN uh, in the field. Mm. But here you can very easily reap uh, exactly. 5 to 6 tons per hectare, easily even under high MLN disease pressure. Today we can go out there and say, with the partners, we have some varieties. And we are also very excited to see actually our own scientists also coming up with varieties. That really gives us a lot of pride as an organization uh, to show that uh, we have uh, our own people also, breeders, who can also do a good job to, to really uh, to work on the uh, priority areas of this country. Soon, farmers in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda will be able to buy and plant improved hybrid maize varieties with better tolerance to MLN. The bigger plan and vision is to have at least 20 MLN resistant maize varieties in the Eastern Africa market by 2020. As you can see here, these two materials, one is a highly susceptible line, uh, another is a resistant line with absolutely no symptom of the disease. A clean material. Within four years to have a suite of products uh, that are tolerant or resistant to the disease to develop such products uh, is a highly challenging endeavor, but we succeeded in that. We not only have five MLN tolerant hybrids uh, released in Eastern Africa, but as many as 15 MLN tolerant or resistant hybrids uh, that are presently under national performance trials 
in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. And several more, I would say at least 20 to 25 more uh, resistant hybrids that are now in the pipeline. So our vision of uh, replacing a large set of commercial MLN susceptible materials uh, with uh, MLN resistant hybrids is going to be a reality. Greater milestones in the war against MLN will be achieved through the new MLN project funded by USAID. Seed companies and regulatory agencies in MLN affected countries of Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda will be supported to contain spread of MLN particularly through seed to produce and sell to farmers MLN free clean seed. USAID East Africa's Feed the Future strategy is focusing on 20 principal food commodities with an emphasis on wheat and maize. USAID is funding the four-year, $4 million maize lethal necrosis project in partnership with CIMIT to prevent the spread of MLN from endemic to non-endemic areas. Furthermore, the project aims to increase awareness and control capacity of farmers, private stakeholders, and national governments at the local level. The project will help step up MLN surveillance and monitoring in Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe, three of the major commercial maize seed exporting countries in sub-Saharan Africa.